Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Come on, come on, come on. It's a good place to give you worship. Hallelujah. Lord, release your power. Let your presence fall. Hallelujah. Above all, we want God to have his way in our midst. Amen. Come on, worshiper, where are you? Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless him. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Here we are as inferior beings before superior God. An all-knowing, all-seeing, all-wise God, our Savior. I'm going to say something to him. To the God who woke you up this morning and started you on your way. The Lord who's blessing you right now. Tell him thank you. We honor you in this place. Father, be delighted in our worship, our offering to you. We bless your name. We bless your name, God, for you alone are worthy. It is you, O oh God, that we desire. It's you, God, that we seek. It's you, God, that we long for. Like the deer that pants for water at your water brooks, so long as our souls after you. Feed us, oh God. You know just what we need, even better than we know how to ask. Father, you be glorified in what's said and done. Nothing, oh God, to vain glory or strife, but that your people may be edified today and you, oh God, glorified. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray and give thanks. Somebody shall thank God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. You can praise God as you go down to your seat. Amen. God is good. He is good. In spite of ourselves. Well, I can say in spite of me. God is yet good. Hallelujah. He looks beyond all my faults because he knows what I really need. Hallelujah. And he's a God who can and will and does meet our needs. There ought to be at least one witness in the house. Amen. Let's say he's a need meter. He's a way maker. He's a provider. He's a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know because he made a way for me. He made a way when there was no way, when I didn't see my way out, when I couldn't see my way through, when I couldn't think past the process, when I couldn't get my act together, when I couldn't get my thoughts to line up, when my faith was failing. God! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He saw past all of that, through all those lanes, to meet me at my point of need. Hallelujah. God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. Somebody but you, Lord. And I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you, Lord. You've been mighty, 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 mighty good to me. He's a good guy. Come on. Y'all sit You don't know. <laughs> I gave you victory. I love him. I love him. I really love the Lord. You don't know. You don't know what he's done for. Victory. Gave me the victory. Gave me the victory. And 
there's a word from the Lord. There's a word. Amen. We're going to Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Thank you, Jesus. We're just going to look at a couple verses here. First three verses in Isaiah 55. Hallelujah. The victory. And I love him. <laughs> Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. Verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. I just want to share with you in a thought, simple thought this morning, because this is an open invitation. Somebody say, all are welcome. I want to put special emphasis on all. What does all mean? All. Everybody. Oh, there's plenty of good room. <laughs> I know sometimes we can get possessive about our God and who is able, who could or should be able to have access to him. But the truth of the matter is he loves all of us. All souls are mine, said the Lord. We all have one Father, one God, one Lord, my God, one faith, I mean, one hope, one baptism. We all belong to him. You'll find uh, this passage where we pick up here in the 55th chapter to really get a, a good grasp and uh, understanding of what, what the prophet Isaiah is saying to us today. Uh, you have to kind of go back to those previous two chapters uh, to see uh, really what he's showing us. In the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, you'll find probably the most uh, repeated and uh, rehearsed verses in uh, the book of Isaiah, um, the prophecy of the Christ who's coming. Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus comes on the scene, tells us that there is a Savior who's coming to reconnect man to God the Father. The Hebrews, the Jews, the Israelites, they call him Mishiach, the anointed one. In the New Testament, we'll know him by Christos or Christ, which means the same thing, the anointed one, the one who's coming to save us. For so long, you'll find man was in a situation, he had been in a, a predicament, the, the sin predicament, and uh, God sends, um, instructs Moses to give the people a temporary fix. He establishes the system of sacrifices, and uh, they're using uh, bullocks and lambs and goats and birds and turtle doves, all of these uh, in place of uh, what was going to be the final fix for all of us. The sacrificial system was established to just so that man could really see and know that he has a real need for God. Oh, we have need of a savior. And I don't care how good you are, how morally good you are, how on time you pay your bills or your taxes, you need a savior. If anything or if nothing else, we need to be saved. Hey Amen. I had an older gentleman, somebody asked him a while ago, what does saved mean? What are you saved from? His answer to them, I, I, I like it. He said, I'm saved from myself. Saved from myself. 
the thoughts of men's hearts are wicked. And it's because of our Adamic nature, because of Adam. Maybe we have to be regenerated. We have to be born again. We, we have to be renewed. It doesn't matter how you came in, hallelujah, into this world. All of us were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But there comes a, a, a place, there is a, a, a safety net for us. There is provision for us. Amen. We don't have to stay in the shape that we're in. We all must be, got to be born again. Got to be born again. 700 years before Christ appears we'll find Isaiah prophesying that there's one who's coming who's going to be the final answer to the sin problem. He tells us of a suffering savior. He paints a picture of the savior who was coming not for glory and not to be celebrated and to be promoted amongst men but he's coming with a real purpose. He's coming with an assignment from the Father. He's coming to do what no other source, no other man, no other creature, no other thing could do for man. He would forsake his seat in glory and come down from heaven to save sinful men. He left his glory. We are in uh, what is known to many Christians is the Linden season, the season of Lent. This is a time when we set aside and we remember more expressly the, the importance, the significance of Jesus coming into the world and dying for us. We remember why there is a church in the first place and that all of us have been saved. You're saved, you're saved from something. Amen. And like the old man said, you, you're saved from yourself. How many of us, were, don't raise your hand, uh, were self-destructive? Anybody ever did, those over 25, and did anything crazy that could have taken you out? And you know somebody else that it did take them out, but God spared you? Amen. But God... Oh, but for the grace of God, there go I. Mm. Hallelujah. He was coming to save the world from sin and to die a substitutionary death for us. Oh, I want to help those Christians all over the world that are remembering why we are here. We cannot forget, we cannot forget the suffering Savior. Because uh, before he resur was resurrected in power, he endured the cross. He endured the shame of the cross. And when you look at the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, oh, it's all good. But uh, verses 4 and 5 in particular, you says, uh, the, 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 the prophet says, well, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse number five, y'all hear me say it all the time, but, but he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Because he took our place. The 53rd chapter, if I make no mistake, only has about 12 verses in it. I might be off by one or two. It's a very short passage, but it is powerful. It's a reminder to us that this is why we are here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the message. That's the good news. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. He came for the purpose of dying that we might live and not just live my God he said I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly he came to bring to us the abundant life and eternal life I want to remind somebody but there's somebody you're hearing this for the first time you need to know that there's been a great sacrifice that was made for you hallelujah surely 
He's taken on our cares and our sins. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. Somebody say, he took my place. He took my place. So the, 20, the 53rd chapter tells us about uh, him coming, uh, the Savior who's coming. He's not coming to be celebrated. Uh, he's not coming to take a seat on the throne. He, he's coming for a purpose. He's a man on a mission. He had an assignment from the Father because there was nobody else that could do it but him. Matter of fact, I believe it's the first chapter of Isaiah, uh, somewhere around the sixth verse, it tells us uh, that uh, when God was dissatisfied with all of the things that were going on and, and with all of the offerings that were being made before him, he said, listen, he said, who called this fast? Who told you to come? And who told you to do this? Bring to me no more vain oblations. He said, I'm tired of the blood and it stinks. The sacrifices that you're making because they were doing it out of religion. He asked the question, the prophet, God asked the question through the prophet to the people who told you to do this. The funny thing about it is God told him to do it. But they didn't even know, they didn't take the care or the concern to, 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 to find out why he wants us to do this. There are people all over the world. Today is Sunday in most places. In some places already because of the time is already ahead of us. But listen, Sunday, people go to church. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody's listening to me right now. You're only at church or watching online because it's Sunday and that's what we do but when you understand why we do what we do when you do it with an understanding why Sunday Sunday set aside we stop everything we're doing to come tell God thank you thank you Lord for another week thank you God for another day thank you for the breath in my body thank you that I have hands that clap and feet that stop thank you that I'm clothed and in my right mind hallelujah we didn't come here to serve him we came here to worship him we come to the house of God to bless him who told you to do this God said do it I'm giving you the rest of the days give me one back at least give me one And when you come, bring a sacrifice. When you come, be present. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. When you come, sing unto the Lord a new song. When you come, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Bless him. When you come, bring, bring something with you. Then we get to the 54th chapter. The 54th chapter. The 54th chapter tells us that the blessings uh, that are a result of this suffering Savior. He died. He came. He died for a purpose. It was not like anybody else dying. It's not like any other lamb that was sacrificed. Not like any other goat or bullock that was sacrificed. This sacrifice is different. Because all of the things that man was trying to do in all of the places man was trying to go, he could not get there without the help of God. The 54th chapter, he tells him, listen, now you can celebrate and you understand that he suffered. You understand that he bled and he died. And you understand the supreme sacrifice that was made by one who didn't have anything to do with this, didn't have anything to do with it, didn't have any reason to be pardoned, didn't, didn't have need to be, my God, uh, an offering made for him, but he came to be an offering. He tells him in the 54th chapter, sing, O barren. Oh, that did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with trial, child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. He's coming to turn things around. To the one who was not a producer. He says, I am making you not only a producer, but a mass producer. 
to the one who didn't have. He's saying, I'm coming. I'm coming to give, and I'm giving you so much you'll have enough to share. He says, Say, start singing, start singing your song before you see the blessings of the Lord manifested in your life. Don't wait till the battle is over. Somebody found out what that means. People who have experienced victory. You found out that I don't have to wait until I see the end result. I don't have to wait until the cup is being passed or the ribbon is being pinned. I can shout now. I, I can celebrate now. I, I, I know that I'm already a winner. I win. Tells them to enlarge the place of your Stretch out where you are. Make preparations. Because the thing about our God, he's a God who, when he makes a promise, his promises are sure. The promises of God are yea and amen. Yes and so be it. God keeps his word. He's setting the stage before we get to 55. He tells him, listen, there's a savior who's coming to fix you up. He's going to answer your problems. Listen, don't wait till he gets here. Start praising him now because you know he's coming because God said so. Then we get to the 55th chapter and he says, oh, everyone that thirsts. Now this is your invitation. Oh, some of you are familiar with invitations. We, you see them going out and sometimes they'll have RSVP on it. What does that mean? That comes from, that's initialism, uh, from the French word, responde s'il vous plaît. What does that mean? Please respond. The French use more words than we do. Elder Gardner speaks French. You know, did I say it right? Good enough? Please respond. The thing that's different about God asking you to respond than man asking you, because understand when somebody sends you an RSVP and they want you to respond, that's because they probably have a certain amount of seats designated. They want to know how many heads they, they have to count. Uh, how much food do we have to prepare for? Uh, how many people are, are going to show up? And my people, my people, my people, they, they just do not like the I, you know I'm coming. <laughs> Please respond. Listen, when we got married 20 years ago, okay, I was, that was a test. <laughs> Make sure you're counting right there. I'm going to tell on her, she forgot our first anniversary. We need to know how many are coming because we have a budget. Amen. And both of us came from big families. She's a PK and I'm a GPK. <laughs> so the churches were coming. Then the district, the jurisdiction, the bishop showed up at our but, but we needed a hair count. Then we had to limit it down. Because all of the aunties and uncles have to. And so that means my daddy has this 11 of them. And then they got married. And on my mama's side is nine of them. That's my mother back there. Nine of them. That's already 18 people plus their significant others. What's that? 36? We prepared for... 300, I ain't gonna keep count because I'm not a good count. I like numbers, but I'm not, good. I'm not a mathematician. So we had a number set. 300 people were coming. There were 900 guests at the wedding. But 300 can come to the reception. The 300 that RSVP because there wasn't enough to feed 900. And we wasn't trying to act like... We I'm going somewhere. We had to narrow it down. And then I had 46 first cousins that were in my age group. That was just in my age group. 
first cousins. And then, I don't know how many she had. Listen, but it was a whole bunch of us. And we're trying to calculate. So we got this number is changing. How do you fix the numbers? And then we said, okay, you have to be 18 and above to come. That eliminated some. And then you can only come with you. <laughs> no significant other. And don't bring no babies. Somebody showed up with some babies and got turned away. But there was the police was at the door. We had police at our wedding. They went to the church. But anyway, uh, listen, all of the people and all of the preparation and all of the time that we took to get ready, still we didn't have room to accommodate everybody. And those of you, if you've ever thrown a party or had a special event, understand that, that it's important to you that you know what you have to work with. Uh, well, well, how, who's coming? Because you know what you got to work with. The difference in man making an invitation to you and our Heavenly Father making an invitation, when he asks you to respond, I just want to know how you're going to answer. I got a blessing for you with your name on it. How do you respond? He wants to know, is there anybody that want to act like they happy about the invitation? That's all he's looking for. Some level of excitement, some level of anticipation, some level of faith. Somebody, I believe that God will do what he said. And if he invited me to it, he's going to have enough to feed. If he invited me to it, my confirmation is yes, Lord. All I'm saying is yes, Lord. That's all he's looking for from us. Yes, sir. We don't have to worry about whether he'll have enough seats, whether he'll have enough plates, whether he'll have enough spaces, whether he'll have enough room to accommodate. I just need you to show up. Y'all following me? He tells him, in this 55th chapter, in that first verse, hold everyone. That the, all I need you to do is have an appetite. He that hungers and thirsts at the righteousness shall be filled. I need you to have an appetite. B Y O A. We talked about that the other night. It was B Y O. B. Somebody know what that means. Y'all got quiet. Y'all know what that is. Amen. Bring your own appetite. Somebody said bottle. Lucy. <laughs> Bring your own appetite. The first thing that he says to them is, and uh, my points upon the here, he tells them choose life. Oh, everyone that thirsts, come. You are choosing life. When you RSVP, when you respond to God, you're choosing life. When you respond to God, you are choosing, somebody say it. Life. Choose life. When you choose life, and then understand the choice is yours, it's yours, it's yours. Uh, Jesus says in John 14 and 16, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to get in is if you choose me. Choose life. I am life. And then the second thing that we learn in this passage is to occupy your place. I say your place. There's a place for you. You need to occupy the place that God has given to you. I was talking with one of my prayer partners yesterday, and he said to me, and I said, listen, I got to write this down before I forget it. There comes a point in our walk with God where we will sink, swim, or step aside. Then he didn't finish that. He, he, he said, pick a nest. Swim. Swim. 
sink, swim, or step aside. The thing about our God is he presents to us options. It's a choice, and the choice is yours. Will you go down, or will you by faith swim, or just miss out on the opportunity all together? Indecision can cause you to miss God and your blessing. We have to choose. He didn't go get anybody. He said, ho, everyone that thirsts. Somebody came to the house of God this morning. There may be some little ones around here that were drugged on in. Hey Amen. Sometimes we were made to go and we didn't want to. Hey Amen. Own what God has given you. And what God say, says is yours. Make no apologies for your endowment. That's the blessing that God gives. The third thing that we learn in this passage is meditate on the word. Take it to heart. Not just in your head, but absorb and soak it in. He spoke the word, made the decree. The declaration was released. It was spoken. It was out there. Now I need you to do something with what you heard. You need to know what did he say? I told you he was rebuking people in the first chapter about who told you to do this, who invited you. Who, you have to take consideration to know that when God is speaking, it's God. And I reverence and I honor him. And I hear what he's saying to me. Amen. I'm thinking on it. Listen, uh, Elder Sims will tell you, uh, we, some years ago, uh, we were riding in a car and I was talking to him and I found out that I was talking to myself. And I said to him, pay attention. <laughs> and it's been an ongoing joke with us. Uh, though Jesus said, pay attention. Pay attention to the details. Open up, hear what he's saying, but pay attention to what he's saying. He's speaking. How many of us week after week and year after year have heard the word, heard the word, and, and the word was good. It was good when it went down, and it blessed you. But what are you doing about the word that you heard? How are you applying the faith? How are you applying your faith to what you heard? Hebrews tells us, listen, the message went out to all of them. Everybody heard it, but it was only effective for those who mixed it with faith. You can't just hear it. You've got to meditate on it. You've got to be like the cow, by God, that will eat and go back and chew the cud. To go back and remember what the Lord said. I don't see it right now, but I know my change is coming. I know that God will do just what he said. And I'm going to wait on him all the days of my appointed time. I'm going to wait. That's meditating on the word. I was sharing with somebody yesterday, uh, Deacon Newsom called me on the carpet Sunday afternoon. He laughing back. He called me on the carpet Sunday afternoon because uh, we were having a little situation with our vehicle, one of the vehicles. And uh, Deacon Newsom uh, talked to the wife first and he told her, he said, first lady, we're going to put you on the altar. And I said, Pastor, I've been preaching this word and talk about faith. And this is the year of accelerated faith. You talking weak. And uh. She told me about it, and then by the time I got, I guess he waited for me to get settled in at home on Sunday and everything. He called me, and he said, I talked to your wife earlier today, and I was telling her about getting on the altar, and he was saying, you know, about the situation, and, and, and she was talking weak, and, uh, and then uh, we talked for a little while, and he said, hey, you talking weak too. Wait a minute. Now you've been preaching to us about this. He said, you need to be using this faith you've been talking about. Woo! I tell you, all of us need somebody in our lives that will provoke us to good work. I told y'all a few days ago, I'm not a naked man trying to sell you clothes. I believe what I say. And then I got called in on it. Practice what you preach. I'm so glad to report that I took the challenge. 
Hey, listen, I'm not going to be telling you nothing I'm not willing to do myself. Amen. And if it works for you, why won't it work for me? The word of God is sure. God will do just what he said. I was looking at how things look and I was trying to make things make sense. Even though I've stood here and held the microphone and said if it's faith, it doesn't require making sense to you. It ain't supposed to make sense. I told Dick and Newsom, I said, yes, sir. I said, matter of fact, I said, we're going to go get a new car. And uh, he said, I like that. Tell me what you got. I got off the phone. I, I told my wife, I said, see, that stirred up righteous indignation in me. You know? And then somebody said, listen, yeah, Pastor, I think that's a good idea. Y'all don't need to be riding around in a hoopty. I said, all right, you know, I ain't never, I ain't had no problem with a hoopty, but you know, I ain't nah, nah. But listen, faith stepped in again. I was looking at how things looked, how they appeared. Uh, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost <laughs> will bring all things back to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have taught you. I ain't bragging. But this is the first time I went in and uh, Dr. Bennett, that's my friend, y'all. Y'all y'all, y'all know her? Listen, she said to me, she said, Pastor, when you go in, take command. Speak up, tell them what you want, tell them what you're going to do, and tell them how you're going to get it and uh, let them deliver it to you. I said, hey, I can do that. <laughs> Any good Kojic folks, y'all know y'all can perform. Kojic folks know how to put on the show. Listen, I went in and I said what we were going to do, and this is what I, and I said, uh, who's going to be the one that works this miracle for me? They looked at each other because first lady was walking around. She said, ain't nobody coming to see us. Ain't nobody looking to see. Maybe they don't think we want nothing. I told her, I said, listen, I said, the one that's supposed to help us today it's going to come to us. I said, and we're going to walk out the door, and it ain't going to take a whole lot of time. That's what I said. That's what I said. I was talking real good. I, I'm just saying this to help somebody. I'm taking my own medicine. Now, can I be transparent for a moment? We sat there. They went through the stuff. They didn't highly ask, but a couple of questions. I said, so, you know, I was so confident. I act like I had a million dollars in my pocket. He said, you want to put a down payment on? I said, no, not really. <laughs> hey. I said, what can you do without that? He said, we'll see if we didn't come back. He said, well, do, how this look to you? I said, I said oh, I said, yeah, that's easy. You can do that. I said, let's do it. I said, we want the ruby red one. I said, um, he said, well, I don't know if you can have that one. It was on the showroom floor. Why not? So I guess the end of the story is this is the first time we had a car. We just drove it off the floor and went, went home. Amen. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. My last point, he tells them to eat. Amen. You ain't got to be happy for me. I'm happy for me. I dance if I want to. Holler if I feel like it. He says, eat all you can. Come and get some of this. God is passing our blessings and he's got more. My God, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. All of this belongs to him. The cattle on the thousand hills. He said, am I? All I need you to be is a little thirsty. All I need you to be is a little hungry. All I need you to have is an appetite. Come and get some of this. Tell somebody that come and get some of this. Come, 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 come. A car may not be the thing that you need. A house, listen, that's material stuff. We can't take none of it with us. But listen, on his table is all kind of stuff. Glory to God. On his table, he says, listen, I want you to come and dine sufficiently. I want you to respond to this request that I'm making to you the right way. I want you to come. 
Some folks so nosy, they want to know what we going to get when we get there. What's on the menu? What's on the table? Uh, how much you have? Can we have seconds? Listen, come. You'll find out when you get there. Understand, he's not making vain requests. He's not making requests. He's not calling you to something and then end up being short. Ain't nothing worse than going to the buffet. Pay your money. And then they tell you they don't have, they ran out of this. They ran out of that. Listen, we came to eat. Big man know what I'm talking about. I like that. He said, he said amen right away. Listen, we came to eat. Don't tell me you ran out of this or that. Amen. But don't nobody want to hear that. Listen, and when the Father invites you, I told you it's not like man inviting you. Hallelujah. When you come, come and get all you can get. Eat all you can and can all you. Oh. Tell somebody, come. Come, 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 come. The invitation is an open invitation. And the invitation is to all. That means that the ones who are invited, you don't have nothing to do with who else can come. Just bring yourself. And don't be looking around to see who else was invited. Listen, because it's going to be some folks over there on God's table dining sufficiently. That if you had the right to tell them whether they could come or not, they wouldn't be there. And the truth of the matter is, if somebody had something to say about you being here, you wouldn't be here today. But God, But God, uh, it wasn't up to you whether or not I would be anointed. Uh, the anointing comes from the Father. It's his anointing and he'll anoint whoever he wants to anoint. Honey, whoever is going to be willing, whoever, whosoever will, let him come, come, come. The invitation is to you. I was riding down the street on yesterday and I'm going to help somebody today. And I seen people dressed in, uh, I mean, they wasn't just carrying the flag, they was wearing the flag. They had rainbow hair and rainbow clothes and rainbow flags. And then immediately, I got an attitude about them walking down the street that some of them probably pay taxes on. Look at this mess right here. Huh. Our Bible study lesson the other night was talking about walking in love. And on Friday, I was rolling my eyes at the rainbow flag. Ooh, something. Oh my God, that, that's, that's, that, that's high cotton. Now I'm stepping in some places. Listen, we don't know who God wants to use. We don't know who God is blessing. We don't know who he's called. We better be careful. Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Oh my God, work out your, listen, we need to learn how to pray for each other before we take up prejudice. We need to learn how to pray and ask God what he's doing and who he's in and who he's working with before we say what God ain't doing. I'm going to get in trouble. But my God, there's some folks looking, at, listen, they, they so dressed up and they always dress up. And they act like they didn't never have a they didn't have a day when they didn't have to dress up. And they'll let you, they'd be more than happy to let you to believe that times have always been good. And because I love the Lord, He's always making ways for me. And He always he gives me everything I need. They won't tell you that I had some days when I didn't know what I was going to eat or whether I was going to eat. You need to tell somebody your real testimony. Oh my God, because of somebody who was waving a flag before they. A liar and a cheater, a deceiver. Listen, that somebody know that, yes, I'm saved. Yes, God delivered me. He brought me up. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Oh, 
all are welcome. Uh, that, 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 that mean, listen, we're not making room for folks to come in and try to tear up stuff. Listen, no, you need to go to another party. Listen, if you're coming over here, listen, come over where the table is spread. And the feast of the Lord is going on. When you come over here and when you get it and get it right, you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is our helper. The Holy Ghost is our strength. The Holy Ghost is who he made provision for. My God, he said, I'm going away to prepare a place. And where I go, you can come. You, you can come and you can be there in my father's house. A many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. Oh, but listen, I'm telling you that there's a place for you and there's a place for him and there's a place for her. That plenty good room. Ho! Oh, everyone that thirsts, let him come. When you come, God will work on you. If there's anything that needs to be fixed, we can't fix you. The church been messed up a long time trying to fix people because you want to fix people to look like you. And you ain't got it all. That's why I'm so glad <laughs> for this kind of freedom, this kind of liberty in whom the Son is made free. He's free indeed. Tell somebody there's room for you. There's room for you. All you need to do is be thirsty. There's room for you. All you need to be is hungry. He's got, my God, he's got water for you. He's got milk for you. He's got bread and honey for you. Hallelujah. He tells him, come. There's always... A I want to call it a caveat here. When you get there, you have to repent. Give it to him. Lay it on the altar. Father, work on me. All of us have something in God that we need God to work on. The people that we're talking about that we need to be talking to I'm watching the canvas of our church changing and I'm moving but I see them coming from the north east, west and south and in this place you'll see suits and ties t-shirts and jeans skirts and pants but somebody coming because they're hungry thirsty Feed me, Lord, with manna from on high. I don't need you to be telling me that I can't come here and I can't do this and I can't do that. All your can'ts, 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 do's, don't, 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 don't. No, I want to see Jesus. I want to feel his presence. Hallelujah. I want him to work on me. Hallelujah. And I want you to keep your hands off while he's working on me. There are people that are hurting everywhere. The church is a place of healing. It's a place of hope and help. I'm talking to people today that will leave from here and not know whether or not they still have a place to stay. Jumping up in the middle of the night every time they hear a truck or some beeping, trying to see if the repo man is coming to get their stuff. They wouldn't tell you about it because they're afraid that you'll judge rather than help. All are welcome. If you've been changed, you've been converted, you've been, listen, you've been changed, strengthen your brother, your sister, reach, embrace somebody. 
and to know that God loves you. Oh, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. Then he tells them, come and live. I want to open the altar this morning. You may be here today. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin. I implore you, come. 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 He tells them in the second verse, why do you spend money on things that don't profit you? Spending on things that are unnecessary. You don't have to. Jesus paid it all. He already paid the cost. That's why he came. Our suffering savior. And he tells them to rejoice. Sing, O ye barren. Hallelujah. There's a place for you. There's hope for you. There's help for you. There's help and healing for you. If you're here today, you found yourself in a place where you need strength. Open invitation. We'll pray with you. And we'll believe God for strengthening you.